Good morning, everybody. Ay, ay, ay. I look, I'm just clearing ahead. My hair looks horrible. Uh, yeah, my wife told me I should go to the Villa the Arca, which is right. Well, listen to you, Kitty, as soon as I can. I will do it. Uh, but yeah, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Champions League. Yesterday, another eight games. Um, I only saw live about two minutes of the Hoffenheim Manchester United because I actually decided it's better to spend the evening. Let's spend a quite relaxed evening with my wife. Since the kids were in bed kind of earlier than usual and got my use of that and kind of reconnect a little bit. Um, but yeah, um, let's get to the games. I the thing is, if I know there has been game, there have been games, especially Champions League, and I don't know the results when I'm falling asleep, I am too much into it that in the middle of the night I'm for sure waking up. And although I'm saying no, we're gonna watch in the morning. No, I cannot fall asleep again. I don't know what it is. It's obsession. So. I think I watched the highlights around 3.30 this morning. I spent half an hour and after what the doors fell asleep quite nicely again. So yeah, there you go. Uh, first highlight that I watched was the Hoffenheim against Manchester City. And uh, Hoffenheim got a super early lead. And this was one thing that I saw uh, almost universally yesterday. A lot of early goals and really really early goals. Uh, so yeah, Hoffenheim got the very early lead and Manchester City got the early equalizer. Then I think Manchester City dominated the game for most of the time from what I could gather. Um, but Hoffenheim also had some slight chances. Okay, uh, should have been a penalty. That's a, a spot that I saw live. There should have been a penalty given for City. Um, but wasn't for whatever reason. And then, yeah, City got the late goal uh, by Silva to make it 2 1 and basically put the Champions League campaign back on track. I think a draw wouldn't, you know, I still think they have the quality to make it through this group. But. Honestly, a uh, win looks much more comfy for them. Um, let's go to the other game of the group. Uh, it was not the next highlight that, that I watched, but it makes sense to talk about group, which was Lyon at home against Shakhtar Donetsk, um, which was played to, uh, in front of a clo uh, in a closed stadium. Seemingly, there were some UEFA sanctions imposed on Lyon that I didn't know. I hear there was some fan misbehavior, but uh, I, well, uh, I, in those cases, I always hate, hate it when they are not giving us more info in the um, highlights. But yeah, uh, the game, Lyon, I think, had had an early chance, and then Schachter dominated uh, throughout and got just before halftime an early lead. One nothing, and just after halftime, it was two nothing. Shakhtar Donetsk, and they looked well on their way to um, get a grip on the group. I mean, I remember they got a draw at home to Hoffenheim, and now if they would have won, I think this would have uh, established them as uh, uh, put them in a very comfy position. Uh, and Lyon looked dead and buried at that point. Shakhtar could have made it even three. But within a minute, around the 70th, 73rd, 75th, some, somewhere there, uh, Lyon scored two goals and suddenly the game was level. And then it was Lyon pushing for the winner, uh, which they could have gotten as well. Although Schachter could have gotten as well uh, also. So it ended in a deserved 2 2 draw. The commentator of the um, highlight said this game would have deserved to be played in front of spectators. And I think I would agree. I mean, a 2-2 game with a lot of twists and turns. I do have a feeling uh, the game does not... Uh, Schachter might not have gone up to nothing, but who knows? We will never know uh, if it was played in uh, to a capacity crowd. 
But then again, uh, does Lyon get a capacity crowd against Shakhtar Donetsk? Um, of course, let's talk also quickly about the jerseys because they were in a way special this time around. We had uh, the Hoffenheim played in blue and the Manchester City played in purple with the orange sash, which actually I told you is a nice uh, look and then orange pant. I actually would like to see this as a Netherlands away jersey, honestly. I think it looked in, it looked interesting enough. Let, 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 let's put that. Does it look Manchester City? Probably not, but even my wife said when for the few the two minutes we watched. Uh, even my wife said those are nice and interesting colors. And yeah, she's right. I think they were nice and interesting. Uh, I was wondering why they play purple against the dark blue. Uh, well, light blue is probably a shade too close, although I think this should have been for better contrast because the black one against the blue would also not provide enough contrast. So I guess it was a compromise. So we're done with that. Oh uh, yeah, and then Shakhtar Donetsk against Lyon were both in the first uh, jerseys. Uh, as I said, I don't necessarily like the Shakhtar Donetsk kit, but with this blue in the black stripe, there's something special about that. Uh, let's run to the other group. Uh, I think the big game for me was Bayern against Ajax. I mean, those are two superpowers. Uh, fortunately, Ajax is dwindling a little bit. Um, where Bayern played in all red, which was really nice to see. I don't like the look with the blue pants. Seemingly the fans don't like either because they are really clamoring for having only red and white jerseys. That this should be in the club constitution. That they cannot make up any um, odd colors like the mint green out of nowhere. As the people please, I think they're not even, they are even not happy with the navy. It was a big movement in the 90s actually when Bayern um, first showed up with uh, red with some blue accents, then suddenly the blue took a little bit more precedence. Uh, there was this red and blue stripes and the blue pants, and then the next one was this dark blue with just a red uh, chest band, and I think fans were going nuts over that. And it was a whole decade where blue was going in and since then it was mostly uh, red jerseys and now they're coming with the blue again, which I don't quite understand. But yeah, uh, the game was also, uh, I think Bayern got a very early lead, uh, Robben on Hummels, which was actually quite a nice move. And then Ajax took over, uh, by, by, by the way, the black Ajax jerseys. Uh, I wish this was played uh, Ajax in the white with the red. I know this might be too much of a color clash for UEFA, but this is how it's traditionally been played. I think it, uh, everyone would have understood who is who. But okay, black it is. I'm not so sold on the black jerseys there. Um, after the early Bayern lead, and that's what I saw when I, uh, before I went into bed, that Bayern had this early lead and I thought, oh, there we go. But no. Ajax put back and actually controlled most of the game, got the equalizer and should have gotten more. Absolutely should have gotten more. Um, if you get a point in Munich, this is a great result, but I think if you have the chance to win in Munich, um, you probably can secure qualification right there and then. Um, secure, but you put yourself in a really good spot. I think that Ajax will have some problems against Benfica. Um, so, you know, getting six points to start off your campaign, that would have been a huge result for them. But yeah, now they sit at four points, uh, Bayern also at four, so those two are the early uh, uh, top of the group. And Ajax has the goals going for them. So yeah, there you go in that regard. Uh, as I said, Ajax had the chances to get way more out of this game than just a draw, but that's the way it went. Uh, the other game in that group was uh, Ajax against Benfica, where both playing in their traditional jerseys, which uh, looked nice. Um, and Benfica got the early lead and doubled it up. I think within 10 minutes Benfica was up 2-0 and seemed fully in control of that game. Um, and then shot themselves in the foot by getting a 
red and yellow uh, late in the first half so you have to play the second half with 10 men still uh, you should control the game enough to not get an equalizer but uh, I got the early uh, goal in the second half and then they even equalized not sure shortly after probably could have even made it three I think that game was uh, there was a potential loss for Benfica in there uh, but also Benfica had a big chance uh, from what I heard from the highlights the only the only shot in the second half or the first shot in the second half that lands right at the uh, post so yeah there was a oh no this went in this went in I think of one three two ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So Benfica, yes, they made it 3-2. For some reason I had this as a 2-2. You should not watch highlights in the middle of the night. So yeah, first shot on goal. Benfica gets the goal. They made, made, made it 3-2. And got the home. I got the win. Aiken is now sitting on 0 points. Benfica 3, Ajax and Bayern at 4. And yeah. As an Ajax fan, I'm a little bit pessimistic because now the two games have been made against Benfica, you need to get at least a win out there. I think Benfica is honestly the stronger team, but games will have to be played. Uh, I'm still not. Uh, I'm still down on Ajax because of their performance against PSV, which was just ridiculous. Honestly. So yeah, we got that group. Uh, Let's let's go to the Juventus group because that, 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 that was the other early game. Juventus against the young boys or EB Baron. Um, I honestly would have liked to watch that one, um, but when I actually tried to get on, I saw it was three nothing. So there's no need for me to watch this any, anymore. Two quick goals by DiBala and a third one by DiBala. Ronaldo. Is sitting up, up in the stands and the baller shines. Uh, I don't want to make much out of it. Um, of course, now that Ronaldo is the focus of Juventus, the baller will not shine as much. Uh, that's as much as I can say. And there, and leave, and leave it there. It was a business like win in a way for Juventus. They take business and are now totally in control of that group. The other game, Manchester United against Valencia, we have in German uh, saying this is Not gegen Elend, which is basically misery against desperation or something like that. And yeah, it ended exactly what you would expect from such a game, 0-0. Uh, chances for Manchester United were there, I think Pogba had a, a nice uh, try on goal. Uh, there was a Rashford hit the bar, so you know it could have been a Manchester United win. I think everyone expected kind of a Manchester United win, but seemingly every, everything's gone the wrong way uh, for Manchester United. And Valencia is also in a really bad spot at the moment. I'm really curious how this group will end. I think Juventus will qualify with games to go, honestly, unless. You, uh, Manchester United gets some miracle going. And then the last group also had the most interesting results. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing my Italy jacket. Uh, the Italian teams did well. Jacob scored a hat trick against uh, Victoria Pilsen. And Roma ended up winning 5 0. I think Ünder with a beautiful goal and uh, just in Kleibert. Kleibert. Patrick Kleibert so scoring the goals. Uh, I think it was a one-way street. The interesting thing is that Jaco scores tons of goals against Victoria Pilsen, which in itself is, is remarkable because how often does Roma play Pilsen seemingly more often than uh, we would like to give credit to, uh, to it. Well, uh, Jaco Pro, Jaco's teams are playing Pilsen more often. And then the big uh, of course, both playing in their home jerseys, same for the other games. 
that we talked about, so it was rather unremarkable. Uh, Juventus, I think it looked okay with Juventus black and uh, white with the black, and then a pair with a yellow and black. That I think was okay. Uh, the big game, of course, then was uh, Cesca Mosca, Moskva against Real Madrid, and Cesca got. Within two minutes, the lead had controlled most of the game. Real Madrid didn't have much going for itself. I mean, they tried, but they didn't play it with the first string squad. Had chances, hit the post twice. I mean, it should have been an equalizer. But you know, this was played in the Luzhniki, where Russians ousted the Spaniards at the World Cup and I guess there was a little bit of that energy going. Uh, Real Madrid just couldn't manage to get the equalizer and lost to Jessica Mosca, which are now sitting four points on top of the group. Real Madrid and Roma have three points each. Real Madrid at the moment has the win over Roma, which counts more, but Roma made up for the 0-3 loss to Real Madrid with a 5-0 win, so they are sitting 5-3, so also looking pretty in a way. Um, that's gonna be a tight one, especially now Roma against CSK are gonna be interesting. Uh, one word on the CSK jerseys. Why do you have a red front and a blue back? That I don't get. I didn't see this for my jersey review, I just saw the front, which looked alright, but the back, front and back, this is horrible. Uh, make a note, I'm downgrading this jersey for, just for that, uh, by a star. I don't know what I gave him, maybe five or six. Uh, should be four. Could be even less, honestly. But yeah, this was the surprise result. Real Madrid not winning against Jessica Moskva. And therefore, they're a little bit... I don't want to say they're in trouble, but I think uh, Lopetegui is in trouble. Uh, this is not the result that you want to see. Uh, now you haven't won, I think, three games in a row or something like that. Doesn't my luck here is <laughs> going all possible ways. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be. I still think uh, that Real Madrid will qualify from that group. Uh, I, I cannot see anything else. The quality is just too high on that squad. Um, it's more between Roma and Jessica, I think. And I think quality-wise, Roma should should beat Jessica. But I'm, you know, stranger things have happened. Roma is a team of inconsistency, and therefore you never know where it's going. Well, so this was all from my highlights and what I could gather from these games. Um, Sorry about the Ike Benfica mess up. I had re I I know I, I went up. Yeah, there were two two twos. No, there was a two three. Benfica won this one uh, with a lucky punch in, in a way. Uh, given the first half, it was probably deserved. But uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, other than that, there will be another jersey review tonight with actually quite some interesting teams. Uh, group. G, I think it is. Um, quite some interesting teams, no big leagues, so that's usually not one, which is the least interesting team in the way. Uh, so that's gonna be interesting. I hope you like those jerseys. Uh, I may try to watch a Champions League game tonight, but I'm not sure about it, honestly. Uh, those midweek games, it just it goes a little bit against my schedule. Uh, with, uh, I'm usually the one trying to put the kids to bed to give my wife some rest from them. So, and that's exactly around the time when the games are played. Uh, and afterwards, I usually want to go to bed myself because we're getting up early. And you know, at the moment they are in such a phase that the kid, they are constantly fighting. It's it's sometimes exhausting. We love them both dearly, but at the moment it's a little bit going sideways sometimes. But yeah, we're gonna manage that too. And yeah, let me know which games you've been watching, what were your observations on Champions League. Um, as I said, there was one big surprise, one minor surprise with Ajax getting appointed Bayern, and I think the rest went more or less 
as one would expect, at least I had the kick of yesterday. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and my thoughts and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. I'm gonna talk to you soon. Bye.